One problem is that you have a lot of industry in China, the small and medium enterprises that are the, the bottom of the, of the chain of the global supply chain. They can't get access to loans to actually install the kinds of equipment to maybe to really treat the water the way they should. That said, when, uh, Natural Resources Defense Council partnered with international um, clothing manufacturers and linked and got linked up with the with the textile dyeing industry. It's, a, it's a called Clean by Design, and they're working and teaching them low cost, no cost management options, so that you actually instead of throwing away the dyes and the toxic stuff after you've made the clothing, you can recycle and you could save money. And and that's 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 a really encouraging development that that I haven't really seen too many international organizations getting further down the supply chain because that's often the big challenge. Look, I, I, I like the idea. I have to admit I'm a little skeptical. Mm -hmm. I don't see how money is the issue. There's plenty of money to go around. I mean maybe for some of the smaller companies, maybe not. But is it really a money issue or is it an enforcement issue? Because there are plenty of laws in place now. Giving them more money doesn't make them want to comply really more with the laws. Enforcement is a huge part of the solution, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, the, particularly the small companies, you know, they do need some funding. And but enforcement, I mean, having you know whether or not the local officials are inclined to enforce the rules on the book, or if they decide not, you know, not to tip off the the companies when the Environmental Protection Bureau is going to investigate. I mean, that's been a big challenge. That said, because of of the Chinese public is hyper attentive now to not just air quality problems, but water quality issues. I mean, Ma Jun has his online water pollution database. It's government data, but even the government data shows water quality is not good. And a lot of environmental health researchers in China publishing their reports. So the public is very concerned about the water quality, even testing it on their own. I don't know if you heard that Jack Ma was selling water pollution testing kits. So he's making some money, and people test their water and upload it to a database. I, I, I'm, of course, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, but look, this past few weeks is probably the biggest push I've seen from Beijing to mm -hmm. the media to building awareness about the seriousness of the problem to the Chinese people in China. Exactly. Ultimately, they're the ones that get hurt the most by it, and they're the ones that will benefit the most from any improvement. Exactly. So here's my question. Is it enough? Are they aware enough to the point where the citizens will hold corporations or officials, I guess, accountable and say, hey, look, you're right. It is a big deal, mm -hmm. and, I, and I want you guys to take action to help us at being the citizens. I think that one... I think, yes, definitely. I mean, the pressure's on. Some of the transparency tools are there. International companies are also coming under pressure from their shareholders to try to green their supply chains. But one of the concerns that I have is that, particularly on the east coast of China, where, you know, more urbanized, richer public, that some of the dirtiest enterprises, they, we've seen it for a while, are moving further inland to poorer areas. That makes it. And that makes it more difficult, because when, you, when, you're, when you're a province further in the inland of China, and your economy is not developing, you know, you might open your arms more widely. Okay, chemical industry, come on in, and you will turn the other way. So it's it's, a, it's kind of a, a wave of déjà vu where we're gonna we're, we've been seeing better enforcement along the coast, but then it starts repeating itself further inland. Now there's hope that with this water pollution action plan that came out, and and again a more hyper alert public, that we maybe won't see a full repeat, but it it, it does ca cause one pause. So all these big announcements, all these big plans, how do we measure success here? Is it, is it, it's not obviously measured in days, but I'm talking like, are there metric points in each year? How do we measure that? How do we know that it's, it's working or not working? Well, I mean, one, one issue that's going to be really vital to see, I think, you know, within the next year is whether or not we are going to see m more extensive water monitoring, more real time, and making it transparent because that that is a we've used this in the state. It's one of the you most. You want to see transparency. We want to see transparency. I want to see transparency. But well, you do. You we do. do. You want but to see transparency. It's been you know in terms of like in the U.S. Our EPA, you know that they talk about how open information and transparency of what's going into the water, the biggest way of shaming and naming because it's not you don't have to troop people out to measure it and and take people to court because it's it's in some ways the public becomes the court what is their ultimate the users of water what is their responsibility is it to conserve is it to to point out issues that they're concerned about and to tell officials where's their responsibility well i mean i think that you know the public they can you know they, i mean there are 
it's not huge yet, but the, I mean, there are examples of, in different provinces, like Hunan province, there's a group called Green Hunan that has a network of volunteers that actually walk along the main rivers and they, you know, they monitor and they, they call the Environmental Protection Bureau if they see violations. And, and that's been kind of an exciting development that we've seen in, in, in other s provinces and cities in China where some people in the public see themselves as having a role to be the enforcers. But ultimately, it really should be the government that is yeah. the true enforcer there.